Job chapter 34, Elihu continues. Furthermore, Elihu answered and said, Hear my words, O ye wise men. Now look at the respect. Now they've been called quacks. They've been called men of no value, no wisdom. And yet Elihu says they are wise men. Give ear unto me, ye that have knowledge. There is no understanding. And understanding in the Bible is your relationship to God. That's what these men did not have. For the ear trieth words, the ear hears words, as the mouth tastes meat. And it's amazing that you go through the book of Job, how many body parts you see listed. And when a mouth tastes meat, you know, is it sweet? Is it bitter? Is it sour? Is it sugary? And yet the ear, like the mouth, has functions that, you know, am I being deceived? Am I being swindled? Is it truth? Like... When you've been in the King James Bible and you read it daily and you study it daily and somebody quotes to you another but you can hear with your ears. That's not right. And churches today are blind when it comes to hearing music. There's music being played by the devil. And and so you're so involved with the flesh, your ears are not trying. And Elihu is saying, listen, listen to me, you wise and knowledgeable men, listen to what I have to say. Let us choose to us judgment, the standard of our topic of talking. Let us know among ourselves what is good. That's a very great start. As we begin to start, let's look at what is good. For Job has said, You'll find this in 22, 3 and 1617. I am righteous, self-righteous, and God has taken away my judgment. Well, why are you in a condition you're in? The devil may have wanted to destroy Job, and that's true. But God allowed the devil to attack because I want something to be worked in Job's life. To the devil is destruction, to God is chastisement, chastisement, correction. Should I lie against my right, Job would say, my wound is incurable, true, without transgression. Now look at that. I am being tortured by God. And I've done nothing wrong. And too bad Job does not have a Bible that says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but isn't that still remarkable that God told the devil, look at this man, he choose, it's choose evil. He gets away from evil. evil. He's a prudent man. And yet look at him sit there like, well, Thou shalt love your, thou shalt honor thy mother and father. Thou shalt do no evil. That you know, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt all these I have done from my youth, Lord. Oh, really? Sell everything you got and, and give to the poor and come follow me. <laughs> and you know what the Lord nailed down? You're coveting. And. Again, we, we got to go in this fine ground because there's one group of people that says this and one group of people says that. All people, sir, people believe all your judgment, pains, and sorrows because of the devil. And then all your pains and sorrows because you, you've done God injustice, God's mad at you. That's not true. Job has told God, and Elihu's right, he's quoting from Job. How dare you do this to me? I'm perfect. And yet Job and that rich young ruler that got no rebuke from Jesus, those are the righteous men you could ever find in the Bible outside of Jesus Christ. What man is like Job? None. Except for Jesus Christ is more the perfect, sinless perfection, who drinketh up scorning like water. 
Now, if you just been, what man's like Job? He just see Job sitting there, <laughs> who drank it up scorn like water. Uh, what? You know, that's the message that Stephen gave Israel. We were a mighty people of Abraham. Yay! And then Abraham went down in sin. Mm -hmm. And then God called Moses to get the people. Yay! And Moses killed a man. Oh. And it would lift them up and then bring them down. Which goeth in a company with workers of iniquity. And walketh with wicked men. He's talking about Job. Job 21 verses 1 through 15. Yeah, Job had been right in everything he said, but what company was he keeping with? And by the way, where are all those men that Job kept company with? You know what a true Christian is? Over the years, I've, many, I've known many Christians, I've known many people in church, and I have been involved in the ministry, and I know all they that live God in Christ, she shall suffer persecution. And then when you come across persecution, you come across trials and, and problems, and by serving the Lord, you turn around, and where are all those Christians? The ones that are proved to be right with God, the ones that are still there, still praying for you, still serving the Lord themselves, and you're encouraging you, and you're encouraging them. Isn't it amazing how this whole book of 34 chapters, only four people show up to Job? It's amazing. And you know Job had more friends than that. And he has, Job has said, it profits a man nothing that he should delight himself in God. And that's when you start looking at the wicked man, and he, he's doing well, he's doing wonderful, he's got the jobs, he's got the no problem. Yeah, but that may be on the earth, but what about the eternal life? What did Paul have? He had nothing. Do you think Paul's got a big old grin right now in heaven? Mm -hmm. You think Paul and Peter, James and John and Mary and all them in heaven right now? Hey, it was worth it all. Mm -hmm. He just got Paul nudging. Hey, look, they're quoting from your book, Peter. Look at that. Hey, Paul, look, someone's getting saved by what you wrote. Yeah. They had nothing. The story is that Peter hung upside down to die because he didn't want to die like Christ. And I believe Paul lost his head. And at the end of Paul's life, bring me some parchments. You know what the world would consider that? A loss. And that man said, oh, I'm going to go out and build me storage centers. I'm going to get me more storage centers. I'm going to get me a storage center on every block as I travel from here to there. And God says, thou fool. Job was looking for a prophet. And you say, well, Elihu's blown up. I, Elihu is not rebuked. I'm going to tell you by the end of the book. Elihu's not rebuked by God. Those three friends of Job were. And we'll come to that. Therefore, so a lie who had to be there for all or most of the conversation. And you know what a lie who's doing? He's using the words of Job himself. And I've done that. I've listened to people. Then I'll turn their words against them. And sometimes they get mad and angry. But that's what you said. Therefore, hearken unto me, ye men of understanding. Oh, so there is understanding, but it's not put with wise and knowledge in verse 2. You're going to have all three together. Solomon was given wisdom and knowledge from God, but he didn't have any understanding. How do you know he didn't have understanding? He married his women and went and served other gods. Understand is what your relationship and do what you know and know how to do what you know and application to God. Far be it from God that he, God, should do wickedness and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. And Job wanted God to break God's holiness so Job could get away with what Job wanted to do. Now, they were he was accused of going to hell. He's not going to He is right in God's eyes. And the Bible says God will chasten his children. He won't chase other people's children. And the fact is that God is chasing Job shows that Job is right with God. Now, if I take my children out of the store and bring them home and chastise them, okay. 
But if I grab another child who's not mine in the store and start chastising them, I'm in trouble with the law because that's not my child. And God and Job said, I mean, God says in Hebrews, I love them that are mine, and I if I don't chase them, they're bastards. And a lie who's telling Job by his own words, you are a sinner. And Job takes it well. Verse 13, who hath given him a charge over the earth? And who hath dis disposed the whole earth? Who put God in charge? <laughs> you know, there's some people think that, and I met a few of them, when they show up to church, God in all heavens please because they're there. <laughs> I've met those people. They're holy rollers. There are people that actually think that they know the Bible, they know it's right, and they'll come to a street preacher and say, what you're doing is wrong, it defies the Bible. And I tell them, you haven't read or studied your Bible. I had a preacher's daughter one time come up and give me the right act, and I can only pray and say, Lord God, work on her heart for right, because she's wrong. And if her father and mother or anybody right, they're at home praying for this wayward daughter. Who put God in charge? What gave God the right to do this to me or that, you know, whatever the circumstances are? If he, God, set his heart upon man, and if he, God, gathered unto himself his spirit and his breath, God has given man the breath. God has set his heart on certain people. God's heart on me is because of Jesus Christ. I'm a child of God because of Jesus. And if God takes my breath, I'm gone. He has that right. Uh, one of two of Judah's boys. You're dead. You're, I don't like what you You're dead. What gives God that right? He's God. He's almighty. He's holy. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. And that's a controversy of scholars in the Bible. How dare God can't hate? Hey, he's holy and right. What are you going to do to tell God he's wrong? And I guarantee, and I, I believe, and this can be wrong, I believe the great white stone judgment, I believe God's going to allow the people to speak, and they're going to point their finger at God and say, you're the wrong one. Who do you think you, I think they're going to, th who do you think you are? Look what I've done. And you imagine Jesus Christ judging them and just put his hands out. Depart from me, you work as iniquity. See my hands? I never knew you. I really believe that people are going to have the right to say whatever they want. But God will be proved right. All flesh shall perish together. Again, I met one man. He's never going to die. And man shall turn again unto dust. Genesis 2, 7. How great you are. Look at me. I'm, I'm the great. You're but dirt. And you are living on borrowed time of your breath by God. All have sinned and come short of glory get God. And the wages of sin is death. You're going to die because you're a sinner. And then you. Within time, time comes, you're going to rot. If now thou hast understanding, talking to Job, hear this. Hearken to the voice of my words, talking to Job and his men. Listen to me. This is what Job said. And how dare you go up to God and say, God, how dare you think who you are? Look at me. Job, you know what you are? You're dust. You know what your life is? It's borrowed time of God by God breathing in you. Remember Genesis? I mean, all actually, the Bible says we're to honor elders and rulers and our bosses and, and presidents. And, but you know what they really are all? They're just a bunch of dust with God's breath in them. And they're at the mercy of God. And without Jesus Christ today, they will go into a, a, the lake of fire that burns forever. Who do you think you are? You're man. You have a birth date and you're going to have a death date. God the Father never had a birth date and he never had a or will have a death date. 
He's eternal, always been. Where did God come from? I don't know. He came from whatever he came from, but he's almighty God. And our life is in his hands. How dare you say, oh, God. If now thou hast, oh, verse 17, shall even he that hateth right, hateth right, excuse me, govern. And what you're going to see in these next few verses, they are contradictory verses, but they're happening today. Can you imagine somebody leading a nation anywhere in the world and they hate right? <clears throat> How many rulers do that today? How many governors, princes, kings, queens, and presidents, and, and uh, prime ministers, and whatever the world's leaders touch? How many of them hate the right? I can find a whole bunch of them in the city of New York in one building called the UN. And they're in charge. And Elihu, back in the BC, 1520, you know, they ought not to be ruling. They do. And wilt thou condemn him that is most just God? Whew. Is it fit to say to a king, thou art wicked? I know plenty of Christians in America, our previous president, they were, he's wicked, he's wicked, he needs to go, can't stand him. And they do that with all the Democrats and all the leaders of our nation who happen to be Democrat. And they say they're wicked, they're vile, they're mean. All have sinned, including your Republican president. And look what Elihu's saying. Should you be saying that? Absolutely not. And yet it's being said all over the world. Yep. You know what man did that? A man called by God. Nathan walked up to the king and says, Thou art the man. And that man, Nathan, had all right to say what he did to that particular man. Because God spoke to Nathan. Ye are, uh, and to the princes, ye are ungodly. And then those same ones that will tell you that this person is wicked in government, then they'll turn around and tell you, Thou shalt not judge me. Thou shalt not judge. You are doing it. How much less to him that accepteth not the persons of princes? This is what Peter said in Acts 10 34. After he told God, Oh, I can't eat, Lord, I have not touched anything unclean. God said, Don't call that which I've called clean. Peter, you're going to a bunch of people you can't stand. Now, if you would take the Catholic view of Peter's vision in Acts chapter 10, you know, rise up and eat. According to that, the Catholics should be going out eating Gentiles because that's what God told Peter to do. Then he just say, go eat that. And he's talking about Cornelius and his family. What was God telling Peter? As unclean people, just as much as your unclean diet. But you're going to go to them. Nor regardeth rich more than the poor. And the book of James is about that whole thing. James will tell you, if you honor the rich more than the poor person, because they're, because they're lively, gay apparel, you sin. Mm -hmm. More than the poor. For they all are the work of his hands. Let me tell you about two men, okay? I'll tell you about two men. One of them was a peanut farmer. And he grew up and he's doing all kinds of good business for, you know, homeless and making houses. And he's just so great in the Southern Baptist and he ain't no good to God. And there's a, another man that grew up in the peanut farms and started a Bible church. And he got involved with the Bible church before his sons got into it. And he preached Bible dedicated men to go preach the gospel. I, I can't even remember his name now. That's bad. It went right out of my head. He's got a, I mean, the school's rotten today because of his sons. But these are two peanut men. And to the glory of God, and forgive me for not knowing his name right now, but my brain. He'll come back to me tonight when I'm sleeping. For thou, for they all are the work of his hands. That rich man. And that poor man, God made him, creator. 
Job, who do you think you are? You're you're a judge, and you have you can judge people, and you give mercy to widows, and you. They're all the same, Job. They're all creatures of God. In a moment, they shall die, rich or poor, and the people shall be troubled at midnight. <laughs> that's almost like a prophecy of the Exodus. Remember, the Exodus hasn't happened, but at midnight, that's when all the Egyptians died. That's when the destroyer came through Egypt and killing all the firstborn that were not under the blood and pass away. Most people who die a normal common death will die in their sleep. And the mighty shall be taken away without hint, natural causes. Joe, I don't care who do you think you are. You know what? Rich or poor, who, who are you? You're death. You're going to die. Whether you're rich or you're poor, you're going to die. That breath belongs to God. Get off your high horse. Oh, I got that man's head. I, I can picture that guy's face and I can't, can't get it out. He's going to say Jack It's not Jack House. For his eyes are upon the ways, Proverbs 15, 3. The, the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. The ways of man, and he seeth all his going. God knows where you're going before you've gone. You can't hide from God. There is no darkness that God cannot see you, nor a shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. You know, you may think your mom and dad don't know. You may think your spouse don't know. You may think your kids don't know. You may think your pastor doesn't know. God knows. And it's so funny because the Bible does record about that secret sin. It ain't secret. God knows. And he's writing it down, date and time, and all that's involved when you do that sin. He knows. And if you don't put it under the blood of, of Jesus Christ, it's going to be made known throughout all the people. Think about this. Let's say you have cheated on your wife. You knew you got away with it. And if you don't put it under the blood and don't get it right, it's going to be revealed. Whoever you are, whether you be pastor, deacon, member, uh, whatever you are, you'll be known. Get it under the blood. There is no darkness, no shadow. You can't hide from God. Where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. They do it at night. God can see it. For he, God, will not lay upon man more than right. That he should enter into judgment with God. you find that in Ezra chapter 9, 13. God is judged. God knows. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number and set others in their stead. One night the angel of the Lord comes on and wipes out this entire enemy. And the Bible says they woke up in the morning and they were all dead corpses and people have the problem with that. How could they wake up and be all dead corpses? He didn't kill them all. And yet you lost the verses that he can break mighty pieces. Here's that verse. And others in there said, there were men that woke up that morning. Well, you're now captain. Well, how am I captain? Those captains are dead. They were killed. Now you're in charge. There have been military men who have been killed in action. And the next guy in line comes up to take that post. There has been president of the United States who have, been, who have died in office. And then the vice president comes into place. And God's in charge of it all. Therefore, he knoweth their works. You can't hide. He overturns them in the night. So they are destroyed. Death. Maybe he's making you to the point where you can't even do anything if you're still living. He, God, strikes them as wicked men in the open sight of others. As Job is right now. But he's not talking about Job. He's giving Job illustration. This is what God has done to men like you, Job, with the same sins that you've done. 
You're not hiding, Joe. We all know about everything that's happened to you. Don't hide behind, well, look how great I am. Notice how great God is. He striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others because they turn back from him and would, would not consider any of his ways. That's correcting people who are of God. They got to the point where they, they, they've gone totally against what God has told them to do. And God says, I'm done. Aiken. He God says, listen, all that is mine in Jericho. Leave it alone. Aiken went in there, some gold, some silver. Hey, a garbage. And what did he do? He hid it in the ground like God. What happened to the gold? What happened? To, what is that Babylon garment? I don't know where it is. Joshua found it, and Joshua had no idea what Achan done. Joshua didn't even know what Achan didn't know Achan. You're not going to hide from him. And Achan and his family ended up dead. That's a perfect illustration, even long before that, st that story happens. So they, so that they caused the cry of the poor to come into him, God. And here is the cry of the afflicted. God hears our prayers. How's that? In the Old Testament book, a man that is just battered with medical issues, three worthless friends, and you know what, you know what this guy told Job? God hears you. God's listening. Why is he answering? Maybe not now. Bob Jones Sr. There it is. That's what I'm thinking about. Bob Jones Sr. Peanut farmer. Peanut farmer. I knew I was going to get it. So the poor and afflicted. Lord, I, I, can't, I can't survive, Lord God. I'm not getting paid enough. But my company's making billions. I'm not getting enough. Guys, like, I hear you. I'll take care of that. You know, employers are going to have to answer to God one day, saved or lost. You know, the Bible has much to say about employers and employees. You know why he's saying this? For the cause of the poor cometh to him. You know what Job said? People came to me for judgment and I settled it. I took care of the people who didn't take care of them. And Elihu is saying, uh, Job, what about God? What? You maybe take, I'll give you, let's say, Job, you've answered 50 widows who needed help, okay? God's answer, 50,000, 50,000. There are places all over the world that you don't even know about, Joe. God's listening to them and answering them. Right now, there are people all over the world right now with all kinds of complaints, all kinds of troubles, trials, tribulation, fills, and everything, and, and sorrows, and, and medical, and they're crying out to God right now, and he hears them. He hears them. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? Well, this is well, God. Have God ever just giving you peace? In that moment of peace, it's just great and wonderful. Well, you know, the trouble comes up. Yeah, but didn't God give you that peace? Did you thank God for that peaceful moment? That there was actually just no devil, no troubles, no problems, anything like that. Things were good. That's the time we ought to be counting our blessings. Because guess what's going to come? Trouble. Well, it says a contradiction. Who can make trouble? Well, that's when the time of trouble is to come in your life. Job was at great peace in Job chapter 1. To the devil children. We are in great peace and to the devil children. But that great peace, lavish in that peace, joy in that peace that you got right now. When you're in the mountaintop, peace. But guess what you're going to go next? Down. And when he hides his face, God, who then can behold him? No one. And that's a terrible place to be. You got the peace of God with no trouble, and then you got God saying, I'm not even going to look at you. What are you going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do that Job and Elihu can't do. We go to the mediator, Jesus Christ, a father. 
I'm coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I have sinned. I repent of my sin. And I'm your child. Job didn't have that. And he's got no Levitical priesthood. He's got no temple. Aren't you glad you're living on this side of Calvary? There are people, oh, I want to go live in your temple. I want to have the riches they have. The riches can't do you no good. You know, it's so funny. I, I love the Egyptian people to the point. When the Pharaoh died, they put all his riches in the in the tomb, in the pyramid, and they would they put his servants in there and mummify his kitty cat. They put everything in there. And they're doing so good in museums today. And the, some of the stuff is sitting in, in the basements of museums. And they ain't doing Pharaoh no good if he's in hell. The Bible says the rich man went to hell. What goods did he take with him? None. You know, the Bible says also, you, you know, no, excuse me, take that back. People say you can't take nothing to heaven with you. Oh, yes, I can. I can take lost souls I had part of, of planting and watering. That's much more valuable than gold and silver. And everything I've done for God, I earned gold, silver, precious stone for crowns and millennial inheritance. How's that? And no one steals God's gold, he said. Lay up your treasures in heaven where thieves and moths can't be there. Whether it be done against a nation or against a man only, that the hypocrite reign not, <laughs> that's today, I mean all over the world, least the people be ensnared. We've had many hypocritical leaders and rulers all over the world. Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement. I will not offend anymore. There's uh, uh, a great one. God, you beat me. God, you love me. God, you care about me. God, you went after me. I'm not doing that no more. That's what God wants to hear. Well, when it, you know you got your child and you spank him on the high knee, you, you tell him go out in the corner, whatever you do. Wouldn't you just love to have that child come up to you rapping? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't want to do that again. That'd be good. Great. And wouldn't it be great to see that child or as a child guy and we fight that temptation of that sin. And if we do it, we really do it against our nature. I will not offend anymore. That which I see not teaches thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do it no more. That's what God wants. Paul says that I would do, I don't do, and that which I don't want to do, I do. Paul was acknowledging, I know I'm a sinner, I know what my sin is, and I fight my sins. How do I fight my sin? I don't want to do it. Oh, man, but I did it. Oh. That's okay, that's what we do. We're all sinners. At least once in a while, say, God, oh, I know what that sin is. No. No. That pleases God. That pleases God. Now, you may slip the next time, or you may do right three times and slip the four. God likes that. You're striving. You're doing. Do right. And he's talking to Job. Job, stop sinning. Right now, Job, in the condition you are, God is chasing you, Job. Get right. Don't be self-righteous anymore. That's what he's telling him. Should it be according to thy mind, <laughs> what you think? That's the biggest trouble. Well, I think there's a beginning of sins. You ask my family all the times we've gone out with this. I think. Oh, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. He will recompense it. What I think, you know, I this is what I do, and God's going to take care of it. God's going to be happy with me. God is so pleased I give money. God is so pleased I do this. God is so pleased. I am good, people tell me all that. I say, well, the Bible says there's none that do with good. No, not one. But God has to. No, he don't. You know, Judas took the money and went back to the priest. Oh, forgive me, I have sinned in innocent blood. Not good enough. I will not. Oh, wait a minute. I'm way. Where was that? According to, whether thou refuse or whether thou choose, and not I, therefore speak what thou knowest. 
Joe, what are you going to do? <laughs> look, look, look at that altar call. Joe, what are you going to do? You're going to do what I'm telling you to do? You're not going to Tell me. Tell me now what you're going to do, Joe. You notice he didn't say come up to the altar. He said, Joe, I, I, I just told you, what are you going to do? How do you, are you going to take the chastisement and you're going to tell God you're not going to tell me? Let men of understanding tell me. Let the wise men hearken unto me. He's talking to Job and his friend. Tell me, come on. Tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where I'm right. Tell me how you're going to get right with God. He's putting them all in the spot. You know, he's done. You wise men, you under men. Put that ego away. Put that pride away. Get right with God right now. Job has spoken without knowledge. <laughs> his words were without wisdom. Look at chapter 42, verse 2 and 3. Chapter 42, verse 2 and 3. End of the book. Job chapter 42, verse 3. It's Job answered the Lord. This is Job answering the Lord. I know that thou canst do anything. Everything, excuse me. And that no thought can be withhold from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. I beseech thee, I will not speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Look, look, look at Job's change of attitude. Lord, I'm shutting up. You tell me, Lord. That's what Elihu's telling him right now. Shut up, guys. But tell me. That's one of those things. Ma, be quiet. Answer me. It's, it's not a stupid thing. He wants... I don't want you to say anything foolish, Job. I want, you, I want you to say what's right. My desire is that Job may... Watch this. My, Job, my desire is that Job may be tried. Has he been tried enough? You know, Paul said about one man, forget it, I have turned him over to Satan. This is what Elihu's doing. Maybe Job was thinking, I mean, maybe Paul was thinking about, he said, I tried, watch. What verse is that? Verse 36. My desire is that Job may be tried unto the end. Because of his answers for the wicked, for wicked man. Elihu's telling Job, you haven't been tested enough. You have not, not had enough chastisement. For he, Job, addeth rebellion to his sin. He clappeth his hands among us. Yay! Yay! Ha! That's not a Bible definition term of clapping. Clapping is of a good no happy laughter kind of thing in a Bible of joy. It's a sin. And multiplieth his words against God. They clap because of the word. <laughs> That's a good saying. All right. But the condemnation is sin. You got to read your Bible and study your Bible before you do anything. 